always think that we spend too much time often talking about the United States, and as a result, it causes some of the problems that Andreas was talking about, that everything becomes framed in the United States norms and the United States dominates the narrative. And that's, I think, becoming the problem, as Andreas was saying for Ukraine, and also Vadim saying about Ukraine has to think for itself about where it's going and what it's going to look like uh, in the future. But I would say to the, um, the person who asked the question, that there's a lot of other countries that are worried about the idea of Russia being weakened rather than um, uh, you know, disintegrating. I would say that what's more likely to happen as a result of you know, what Russia's been doing is the kind of Russia that we saw in the 1990s, which is a weakened central state, uh, a lot of uh, things going on in you know, various regions, perhaps you know, more of a secessionist movement in Chechnya again, I don't know about Andreas or Vadim others, you know, would agree with this, but a kind of a weakened central state and a lot more chaos of the kind that we saw in uh, the 1990s. It's hard to envisage how other parts of the Russian Federation would break away. Chechnya, I think, would be a more likely candidate. But places like Bashkortostan, Tatarstan, Udmurtia, you know, you, you name the other places, they're kind of stuck where they are. And uh, a lot of um, countries around Russia and part of the BRICS, the Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, they want to continue to see Russia as a counterweight in international affairs. I mean, we've heard that. I've heard it from the Israelis, for example, as well, because of their fears about what would then happen in Syria uh, and with Iran, you know, for example. And just recently here in Brazil, uh, in, in Berlin rather, apart from discussing with Brazilians about their view about Russia as a counterweight to the United States, I've also heard from counterparts from Tajikistan and Kyrgyzstan who are supportive of, of Ukraine in a general sense and very worried about what's happening to Ukraine, but they also don't want to see Russia uh, completely weakened or disintegrated because of their reliance on Russia and the Russian economy and trade, you still got 30% of the Tajik and Kyrgyz economies, roughly, dependent on remittances from the Russian Federation, and no alternatives. Even though they would like to see this resolved, and they would like to have Ukraine whole, free, and moving forward and have relationships with Ukraine, they're very nervous about this whole future and about their own stakes in Russia. So that's something else that Ukraine has to contend with as well. Uh, you have to think about, it's not just Moldova, you know, Belarus and the Belarusian opposition, or Kazakhstan being nervous that they might be next territorially, for example, but it's the Tajiks and the Kyrgyz and others who are dependent on Russia that worry about this in different ways. And I've been struck by how many different countries look at this uh, the, the conflict through these very different lenses from their own perspectives. And Ukraine has to find a way through its diplomacy of engaging with that. And Ukraine has a lot to offer to other countries in the future, as Vadim you know, is suggesting. If, if, if Ukraine can provide an image of how it's moving forward in terms of economy, food, trade, manufacturing, you know, for example, the digital space, Ukraine is an asset and could be an asset for other countries as it has been before. Education as well, for example.